Every time I see this backdrop, I think about Kramer f***ing up. Cancel culture is defined as the withdrawal of support of a public figure after they've done something offensive. Cancel culture has become increasingly popular lately with social media calling out anyone who has done or said something that's hurtful toward a group of people. Cancel culture doesn't seem to have an everlasting effect, as those who have been canceled eventually make their way back into the spotlight after an apology. However, there are a select few who haven't been able to make a return to the limelight after a simple expression of regret. Remember Kramer from Seinfeld, Jerry's wacky next door neighbor who's always had a scheme up his sleeve, known for his upright hairstyle and the way he would bust through Jerry's apartment were trademarks of his. Kramer was portrayed by comedian Michael Richards, who received praise for his performance and won three primetime Emmy awards. After Seinfeld went off air, we didn't see much of Michael Richards, something that usually happens when a successful sitcom bows out. Richards tried to make a return in the early 2000s, this time with him as a star, but that proved to be unsuccessful very quickly, as the show was canceled during its first season. The next time audiences would see Michael Richards was nearly six years later in November of 2006, where he ruined his reputation and career with a single word, followed by a racist attack. Here's what happened to Michael Richards after his N-word meltdown. On Monday, November 20, 2006, TMZ obtained a video of Michael Richards performing stand-up comedy at the Laugh Factory on Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles, California from just a few days earlier. The clip shows Richards shouting the N-word and other offensive comments. According to a 2006 Jet Magazine article published, a backstory was revealed shortly after the incident. Richards went on a racist rant towards some black patrons at the Laugh Factory Comedy Club. Kyle Doss and Frank McBride, two of the victims of Richards' rant, told Matt Lauer on the Today Show that they went to the comedy club that night with a large group to enjoy a friend's birthday. The group of about 15 entered the club when Richards was already on stage, took their seats and ordered drinks. The commotion must have been too much for Richards to handle. According to Doss, the first thing the comedian said to them was, look at them stupid Mexicans and blacks being loud up there. That's the first thing he said. And then he kept on with his bit. And then after a while, I told him, my friend doesn't think you're funny. And then when I told him that, that's when he flipped me off and said, F you N word. And that's how it all started. A few days after the incident, Jerry Seinfeld appeared on The Late Show with David Letterman and asked Michael Richards to come on the show, explain what happened, and apologize. Richard wasn't in studio for the apology, but instead came on the show via satellite. Richards explained his lost temper. Uh, said some pretty uh, nasty things to some Afro-Americans, a lot of trash talk, and... Uh, Stop laughing. It's not funny. The apology was more than uncomfortable and featured a few awkward silences. Richard's constant use of the word Afro-Americans may have contributed to the audience's laughter. During his speech, Richard even said he's not sure if the late night comedy show was the best place for him to ask for forgiveness. Now, the botched apology on The Late Show is probably what inspired Richard to appear on Jesse Jackson's radio show. He also called Al Sharpton to say sorry too. Sharpton said he refused to accept Michael Richards' apology, but did agree to meet with him as a start to address racism in America. I think that what he did was so injurious that he has to sit down with the group and decide how he tries to deal with the healing of the obvious problem he's got in his own mind and his own heart, because it couldn't come out of you if it wasn't in you. Sharpton wasn't the only one who didn't accept his apology. Kyle Doss, who was in the audience that night, didn't think Richards was sincere either. Doss didn't accept the apology because Richard didn't contact anyone in the group. The only places where he said he was sorry was on TV. The entire Michael Richards incident had inspired Reverend Jesse Jackson and Congresswoman Maxine Waters to lead a movement to abolish the use of the N-word. At a news conference, the two asked entertainers, companies, and Americans to avoid the word. Jackson specifically asked everyone, black and white, to stop using the word. We're urging all of you to stop using the word. Whether it's degrading or self-degrading, it's still wrong. We're challenging artists and companies to stop using the word. Hate speech should be rejected. Reverend Jesse Jackson. Michael showed what was basically in his heart and his mind. 
don't use the n-word no matter who you are old young black or white the word is unacceptable maxine waters jet magazine richard's meltdown inspired paul mooney to never use the word again as well i saw the tape and i had an out-of-body experience it was so ugly so horrible i hadn't heard the n-word like this from someone i knew suddenly i was directly connected i was able to look at it not just through the eyes of the world i had always thought it was endearing it's not i've used it and i've abused it seeing the video put me in shock and i'm not easily shocked he michael richards cured me he's my dr phil hip hoppers need to wake up in addition to urging others to not use the word jackson also called for a boycott on the planned seven season dvd release of seinfeld Richards appeared on Reverend Jesse Jackson's radio show to apologize and contacted Al Sharpton to ask for forgiveness. Comedian Daryl Littleton's book, Black Comedians on Black Comedy, would also be discussed in the same 2006 Jet Magazine article. In the book, Littleton goes into detail on how the word was invented and its original intention as an insult by whites towards slaves. Littleton wrote, it was supposed to mean a person who is lazy, stupid, and good for nothing. Now to note, Richard wasn't working very much before that night at the Laugh Factory. Since Seinfeld ended in 1998, he tried to make a comeback in 2000 with The Michael Richards Show. However, the show received low ratings and negative reviews and was canceled after less than two months on the air. A total of eight episodes were broadcasted. The cancellation of Michael Richards Show was blamed on the Seinfeld curse. The Seinfeld curse got its name from three of the show's four stars. Julia Lewis Dreyfus, Jason Alexander, and Michael Richards. After the popular sitcom ended, the three stars tried their hand at starring in their own sitcoms. Despite each show's decent reviews and ratings, all shows were quickly canceled, usually in their first season. After the Michael Richards show went off air in 2000, his next credit wouldn't be until seven years later as a voice in B movie starring his old co-star Jerry Seinfeld, one year after his meltdown. Richards would then participate in a story arc of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Curb Your Enthusiasm star Seinfeld co-creator Larry David. The storyline for the season involved a Seinfeld reunion where the old cast members would reunite for one final episode. In one episode, Richards would parody the Laugh Factory incident with Curb regular J.B. Smoove. In the episode, Richard plays himself and is worried about a possible diagnosis of gross disease. Smoove's character never really actually battled the disease but is only doing so to comfort Richards. Once Richard finds out Smoove is a fraud, Richard yells and berates Smoove while other bystanders look on and pull their phones out and start to record Richard screaming at a black man. Once Richard realizes what's happening, he runs away. If only there were a, a horrible name that I could call you that would make you as angry as I am. The cameo appearance would be the first time the audience would see Richards on a mainstream level in years. The episode of Kirby Enthusiasm was well received and some viewers thought the way Curb addressed the situation was clever and in good taste. In 2012, Richard was a guest on Seinfeld series Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee where he once again addressed his outburst. In the episode, Richard revealed that he pretty much retired from stand-up comedy since that moment. It wasn't until 2013 where Richard would receive his first role as a regular since the cancellation of his self-titled show in 2000. The sitcom Christie, starring Christy Alley, premiered on TV Land in December 2013 with Michael Richards in the cast. Unfortunately, the series would only last 12 episodes and was quickly canceled after its first season. After Christie, work would slow down even more as Richards wouldn't work between 2004 to 2018. He would later return to the big screen in the romantic comedy Faith, Hope, and Love, which received a limited release in the United States in 2019. According to IMDb, this would be the 71-year-old's most recent credited role. As far as other appearances, Richard has pretty much stayed quiet from the spotlight. The last time fans would publicly hear from him would be in May of 2020 to honor the death of his co-star, Jerry Stiller. When Seinfeld ended its run in May of 1998, fans didn't see too much of Richard's in the public eye. Aside from his quickly canceled sitcom, he spent nearly 11 years away from television and his public outbursts didn't do anything to help. In a world where cancel culture and fake outrage reigned supreme, it appears that Michael Richards was one of the many people who actually got canceled. Because, you know, you know, in the back of his mind, he was thinking, I'll get him the next show. <laughs> 
there won't be a next show, Kramer. <laughs> <laughs>